this. I'm also known as the Biker Lawyer. You can read my blog at bikerlawblog.com, B-I-K-E-R-L-A-W-B-L-O-G. Today we're going to discuss how to hardwire a GPS in your Harley-Davidson motorcycle. Now if you take a look at a Harley-Davidson Electroglide bearing, it looks pretty complicated and it looks very complex, but it's really not. It's basically two pieces, the outer cover, inner cover. It's held together by seven screws uh, that use a Torx 27 bit. You have three screws in the front here and four in the back that I'll show in a minute. Let's get started with the fairing removal. The first thing I do anytime I want to remove the fairing is I want to protect the paint and the chrome on the motorcycle. So I cover the fender with a towel as so, and then I take a couple very soft, clean white socks and I put them on the spotlights, as you can see. Hopefully I'm not going to kick the camera, I'm not used to filming. So if anything drops out or falls, it's not going to scratch the um, fender or the chrome on the lights. It also protects the fairing too, if it falls. The, the headlight assembly is actually attached to the fairing, as you will see in a minute. So what I like to do, the first thing I do, is you take your Torx 27 bit, as so, and let me just make sure I'm in focus here. So we take off the three screws. Start at the edge. And I got one of these uh, ratcheting screwdrivers. Let me just set up the ratchet. Let's set up to ratchet the other way. There we go. The screws come out as like so. It's one, make sure you don't drop them. Now on the middle one, I just loosen for right now. I keep that on. That's the last one I take off. Although the service manual tells you to take those off, that's the last one I take off. So we do the third one here, take this one off. Okay, now that it's loose, to the side, we can take the windshield off. It just comes straight out, like so. Put that to the side somewhere. It's plastic, it will get scratched. You don't want to scrape it against anything. Okay, so now we're going to move over to, you can see how I have the handlebars uh, put to the side, so we'll go over here right now. Now we're going to the right. As you can see, the right side of the bike, the right fairing, and let me just uh, try to adjust this camera here. So there's one of the inner screws here. It's right on the inside, and we just unscrew that. Now I'm working inside my garage right now at night because it's quiet here at night in the garage. During the daytime, there's a lot of noise, so that's why I'm doing this right now. So now we go to the lower, we're underneath the forks right now. I got a, a light here so you can see it. You go underneath the main fairing and you'll see right next to the fork, you'll see a little screw right there. You can see it. I'm going to undo it now. And this one, I'm going to take the light off now. You just got to make sure that you don't drop it. And <laughs> watch, I'll drop it. Yep, dropped it, but that's that's why we have the uh, the uh, towel there to prevent it from falling in. Put that to the side. And there are no washers on these inside nuts. Now we're going to switch to the other side. And of course, I'm going to need to put a flashlight there so you can see it. And there it is, right there. Can't miss it. 
right there. Oh, and there it goes on the floor. And we do the next one here, like so. Got the flashlight so it's easier for you to see. Get the screw, take it put to the side. What we're gonna do is, on this particular model, uh, I had an O2 FLHT, which is an electric light standard. Um, it's a basically the exact same fairing. This is an 08 uh, FLHCTUI, which is basically a, a electric and ultra plastic. So this one has the lights on top, and then we have a headlight down here. So basically, um, what you've got here is two connections inside the fairing. So when, when I pull this off, what's going to happen is we're going to have to hold it and disconnect the two connections before we can pull the fairing off. So at this point right now, we're gonna take the middle screw off. Remember we have it loose. Once I take this off, the whole thing will come off. What I like to do is just take the screw and put it in my pocket because I don't like to, I don't wanna take a chance on dropping the fairing or anything like that. So as you can see, the whole thing opens like this. And you have to work it just a little bit to get it out so we can get to the wires. So, as you can see, there's the headlight connection right there. Basically, you just squeeze it and pull. The connection for the upper one is right here. This also just pulls. And we take the fairing off, put it to the side somewhere where it's not gonna get hurt, not gonna get scratched. And here we are. We have our fairing off of the bike. Now on my particular setup here, there's a couple things. First of all, um, if you own an electric light, they have this bracket right here that tend to break or crack, especially on the older electric lights. They go down to here and then they bolt down here. And you want to inspect those to make sure there's no damage on both sides. The newer ones, you know, it's a real beefy bracket, but on the older uh, electric lights it wasn't so beefy and you definitely had to check these things it bolts down here as you can see where my finger and up here it would crack all the, t all the time now if you have windshield bags on we take those off now because we don't want them dropping on our work put those to the side so that they're safe now, in my particular bike, I have a six speaker setup with the Hog Tunes amplifier right here. You can see it here. Here's the Hog Tunes amplifier. And I used power off of the cigarette lighter to, you know, hook up my amplifier. So basically, I'm going to use another area to get to my. GPS. I'm going to do the hardwire GPS. So I'm going to show you that we have it, it, within the actual electric light uh, headlight assembly, there are extra wires within the, within the Harley Davidson electric light light bulb assembly. There's two extra wires, the so orange and black wire, and you can see them here. They're used for the European setup for uh, extra light that they have in Europe. In America, they're not used, so you have a, you actually have a switched power source here that uh, goes off of the auxiliary fuse. 
these two these two particular um, wires here. I'm going to use these for my GPS connection. Previously, there were spade lugs on them. I had already previously cut them off and stripped them for connection to my device that I'm going to use to, to hardwire the, the GPS. So what I'm actually going to use to hook up my GPS or hardwire my GPS to the motorcycle is an adapter that I purchased off of Amazon. Now, um, here's the thing. Your GPS only uses five volts where, or excuse me, yeah, whereas you're, you're, you're running 12 volts off of the motorcycle. So you need an adapter or a transformer to step the voltage down from 12 volts to 5 volts and plus this also ste steps the amperage down for the GPS as well. If you don't hook up this adapter, you're going to blow your GPS, okay? So the one I have is long enough, it's actually like, like, like 17 bucks, something like that. You can see that here's the transformer and there's a short stub off of here to connect to battery and then you have a long cable that whereas on some bikes this might be long enough to run it to your battery As a matter of fact it probably is long enough to run it to your battery but the way I'm going to do this here is I'm going to uh, hook it all up uh, within the fairing now I could cut this and shorten this but I'm not going to hassle it I'm just going to go ahead and use it and I'm going to bundle it and tie wrap it together um, and so there you go so here's the two wires here that we previously identified um, that are just hanging off of the headlight plug and there were spade lugs on there I took the spade lugs off now just for the heck of it I'm going to make sure I have voltage here so, I'm, so I have a cheapo voltmeter that I got uh, from Harbor Freight real cheaply and you stick it to the DC voltage position uh, this particular one it's 20 volts we're going for 12 volts so anything below 20 volts this will register and so red is positive, um, black is negative. Or excuse me, black, yeah, black is ground. So hold on. We're gonna go, you have to get a good connection, otherwise you're not, it's not gonna read the voltage. So we have 12 volts there. So it's hot on auxiliary, which is pretty, good, pretty cool. The headlight is actually not on when it's on auxiliary, but this particular setup is. So when you have the bike on auxiliary, it will actually register. So we're going to cut the voltage off now because we do not want to be wiring with a hot voltage. So basically, it's real simple. Okay, so off camera, I stripped these wires here. They're very, in this particular adapter, they're very small gauge wire. So basically, we're going to twist the wires together like so. So they make a good electrical connection. I'm not going to tie wrap them yet, or I'm not going to um, do anything yet until I test the, test this to make sure that the thing works. You know what I'm saying? You want to buckle, make a permanent install to find out that the transfer doesn't work or there's no power to it. So it's connected. Now, since this is a fuse circuit, we don't have to worry about a separate fuse. Now, on this particular model unit, they, they say that it comes with the with the light on the unit and if the light lights which I see the light that you have power so that's good now let's make sure we have power let's take our actual GPS I bought a new, G new GPS unit the old one I had blew out plug it in to see if we get power but this is before we actually do the permanent install and don't, make sure you don't get the positive or negative together because it'll short out and blow a fuse we don't want that Boom. Our GPS powers up. Let's just make sure it powers up all the way. Now, if you don't have the right transformer, if there's too little or low of a voltage, it'll actually show like it's hooked up to the computer. And that's a bug with some of these units. So you want to get the right you know, adapter. So it looks like it says select a you know, locale, United States, OK. American English, accept all. Agree. That's kind of weird. It's a new unit. So basically, it shows that it's charging right now. It's a new unit. Hopefully, it's not going to do that every time it powers up. That, that would be kind of suck. So, anyway, let's unplug it. We know it works. Let's power off. Let's turn the power to the bike off. And we're going to go ahead and run the cable now. 
And in order to run the cables through the fairing, you've got a very small um, connection or very small gap on both sides. And what I've done is I'm going to bring the camera over here. I've actually mounted my GPS mount here, as you can see. I'm using a RAM mount system. It's basically a U-joint that screws on with the, with the one inch ball. You can mount it anywhere on the bike. I had it previously on the left hand side of the bike because my cigarette lighter was there, but thank goodness I'm not, I'm not gonna have to worry about that anymore. So I put it on the right side now because I'm right handed and it'll be much easier to work the controls. So that's where my GPS is. The beautiful thing is that it's adjustable. It's there right now. You do have the brake reservoir here. Uh, you have a little more room on the left hand side, but like I said, since I'm not um, gonna have my cigarette lighter connection anymore, I'm gonna have it on the right hand side. You can see my little tag here from um, Mount Rushmore last year, Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. So to get this wire through the fairing, on this side, I'm gonna use what's called a fish tape. You can buy this at Home Depot. And basically what this does is it allows you to fish cable through the walls. It's used for data, but I'm going to adapt it for this. Now you could use, a, you could use if you want, um, a, a you know, wire hanger or a string and that type of thing. But this is made for this application and bottom line is it, it, it'll be much easier to fish it through with this. So what we do is we're going to take this through the gap that exists in the handlebar right now, in between the fairing and the handlebar, and the fish tape will go straight through. And it's flexible too, which is a good thing. I can fill it. I'm going to bring it through so it doesn't damage anything. And here it is right here. Now I'm going to give myself some extra room. On this one, I got a 25 footer so I can just safely sit it on the seat. You don't want to scratch anything. You want to make sure that you don't scratch anything. So my fish tape is in. Here's the end of the fish tape right here. Let me make sure the camera's set up so you can see it. Yes. So we take a little, little piece of electrical tape and we connect the USB connector to the end of the fish tape. There you go. So, we take the fish tape and we simply roll it back up. It's a nice thing to have a fish tape around use it in your home for other things besides something like this. And what I'm going to do now is just put electrical tape on these two connectors or the actual power that we previously did. Now the issue here is waterproofing it. Now you know, pretty much the fairing's waterproof. I mean, the way it's a, it's a tight seal, it's rubber around. You're not gonna get water in there, but we wanna make sure that it's waterproof. I don't recommend using those end caps that they have out there to connect wires together. You know, that's a good for a dry application, but if you're, gonna, if you're gonna do something like this, where you're gonna be inside a fairing, you wanna use a good amount of electrical tape. It always works and so we're going to do the positive first, start it off, make sure we get a good wrap around. You could all use, also use shrink tubing, you know, and if you want, you can even solder the wires together. I don't do that. There's no need. So. Cut a piece. Don't, don't put these things on top of your, or the cutters on top of your fender because even though we got the, the um, towel on there, you never know. I could still scratch it. I'm just paranoid when it comes to this. Now, one more time, what we're going to do is go to, go to auxiliary. Whoop. 
Go to auxiliary. Let's take our GPS. Go to the end of the wire that we have here. Plug it in. This garage is hotter than hell in here, guys. Sweating my ass off in here. It's summertime. One more interesting thing is I'm definitely going to need a different, you know, this mount here is for my old GPS. This, this one that you see here, this GPS is a little bigger, believe it or not. So I gotta have to order a new one for this particular model GPS. And the beautiful thing with this hard wire scenario, as you can see, it works. We got power on auxiliary, take it off. So we know we got power. Um, with this, you can use a $99 GPS. You know, they have the Garmin uh, motorcycle GPS, and they also have the GoPro motorcycle GPS. It's a waste of time and a ripoff. I mean, you get a basic, cheap GPS unit, hardwire it like this, and, and go. There so there is one issue with having this type of hardwire set up, and like I said, I'm gonna tie wrap it again, or tie wrap it off camera, is that you do have a, a, like a, an electrical connection here that if it rains, this will definitely short out and blow your fuse. So I've ordered on the internet some mini USB, it's called mini USB B uh, covers that'll cover over this so that when it's not in use, you put the cover on and it's waterproof. Um, I've also ordered and purchased this waterproof case that goes into the ball mount here Right now, I, have, I don't have the waterproof case on right now, but I have a waterproof case here so that this GPS unit basically is waterproofed and the cable is actually waterproofed inside here as well. So it's kind of thick, this thing, though, compared to the GPS I got. So I'm like, let's say when I go to Sturgis, if there's storm clouds out or something like that, I'm in Southern California, so it's very rare that I'm going to use this waterproof case. I will keep it on my bike and I will use it when necessary. So basically, this... Uh, Electrical connection for the GPS. I just need to make sure that I don't get this wet and I'm gonna have a cover for it uh, Worst case scenario is put electrical tape on it, but you know when it's plugged into the GPS. It's just fine. So So finally we we've done these two wires here and I'm gonna tie wrap this or not tie wrap it, but I'm gonna use my trusty electrical tape to take the bundle and tape that together so that we don't have two separate wires hanging out. I, I, I'm very liberal when it comes to electrical tape. That's a solid connection. It's waterproof. And we cut the, cut the end. So now what we have is a bunch of additional wire here. And it's real simple. Since this is already in the housing, I'm just going to tie wrap all this together so that it uh, will go inside the fairing. So now what I'm going to do is tie wrap the cable so that it's not hanging here loose. And this is kind of like an art because we don't, we, 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 there's, there's, once you're, this, the fairing's on, there's not too much room in here. So you want to make sure that you get a nice little package here. So, Using the natural, oh, I see the lights on, so I gotta turn the auxiliary off, so you gotta be careful there. <laughs> All right, so we get a, a bundle together, like so, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie wrap it to the headlight cable so that it's all part of one package here, like so. You don't have to be perfect with this. You just what you're trying to do is get the cables together. And I always keep a few of these in my pocket. And you can see here's the other end of the cable that goes to the handlebar. And for right now, you know I'm going to leave a, a, a decent amount of slack. So I think that's that's enough. Once I have, what, do the final adjustment for the handlebar, then I'll do another tie wrap. The beautiful thing with tie wraps are that. They're not expensive and you can use a whole bunch of them. So, there we go. Cut the slot. And 
as you can see, it's a, it's a small adapter. Some of the adapters that they sell are actually much larger than this, and I don't know why. So this will easily fit into the headlight housing, and it'll fit and work perfectly. So that's about it for now on this particular install. Like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tire wrap the actual cable to the handlebar off camera. Okay, so now that we're done with the work, we're going to put the fairing back on. So the first thing we do, at least for me, is I have these um, windshield bags and I might take them off later and put some shoe polish on here. I just, you know, for right now, I'm going to stick them on them because I want to ride. So, windshield bags go here, center them, and it's like a reverse of what we did before, the reverse process. So, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to stick in the middle bolt, or the, 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 or the what we can call a screw, that goes into the center of the windshield. And those particular screws are chrome and there's a washer and I always say keep them all together on the side and so I, I, what I do is I take it through to my pocket because we have to connect the headlight and the top light at least on my fairing first so I'm going to reverse the camera so you can see what's going on here So we take the rest of that. That's, this is why we put the um, the towel down so that it doesn't scratch anything. So we plug the and at least on this model we have the light on the top. Most models don't have this light on the top. I don't think they're, they're hardly doing it anymore. We just basically plug this in like so. This goes straight in. You hear a click. And that's in. So now we take the fairing and put it back in place. All these wires basically go underneath. All the screws. And it fits goes in a place like so. To put the screws back in, we don't, at least for the first screw, we're going to keep everything loose. At least that's what I do. Because you want to make sure everything's lined up. This is basically a plastic fairing, and they have inserts for where the screws go. And if you strip them out, you can get a new insert, but who the heck wants to go through that? So I just hand tighten this so that it's just, it's in there, but not tight, loose, just what so holds it. We're going to do a reverse process of what we did before. So basically, as you can see, we still have, have to put these screws in here, but we're going to go and we're going to reverse the process. So we're doing a reverse process of what we did before. So we, let's get the uh, screwdriver and we'll do the top screw first, which is right here. And like I said, we're going to put it on loose first. We're not going to put it on tight yet because we want to line up all the other screws. So we get into here and we turn our handlebars so we can get to it. Whoop. We dropped it, but. This is not rocket science. Just you know, pull the front so that it you know lines up. And again, you don't want to force anything here. It should just go right in, like so. It's loose though right now. Turn the handlebar. Go to the other side. You can see our. So we get in here. Do the top screw first. Not 
tight. Bottom screw. Keep it loose. Okay, so it's not, they're just in there right now, they're not tight. Now, go back to the front. Okay, so we go back to the front, we got the middle screw in. And these, are the, these screws are longer than the ones that go in the inside of the fairing. These also have washers. So, we just, you know, hand, put them in for right now. Everything is loose, so you might have to align it. We don't want to tight because we want to put the windshield back in. And make sure that this is this is straight and even. Screwdriver instead of your finger, but this will work. Voila. And you do not want to torque these down too much because if you do, you will crack your windshield. A lot of guys they wanna they think on a motorcycle that hey we're gonna torque everything, you know, hardcore, and you just don't want to do that. So everything's still loose there. So now we take our windshield. Let's make sure my. That, or my pockets here are straight. Line the windshields up with, or line, line the, the slots here in the windshield up with the screws. And there you go. And so the first thing you want to do is tighten this one up here in the middle. Okay. So we're going to go back around here. And we're going to now tighten everything up, but not too tight. Basically what you have is a metal bushing instead of a plastic fairing. This needs to be tight enough to hold it on. These ratcheting screwdrivers make it real easy. So there we go. I'm not going to sit there and torque it. Believe me, I'm a strong guy and I can easily strip the damn thing out. It's not designed to be that tight. Listen. So when you feel it, that's it. Go to the other side. Now go back around to the front. Believe me, I'm not usually used to doing all this work with the camera, so go back up to the front. And we do one final tightening, not too tight because you're cracking the windshield. Just tighten up or you'll feel it's pretty snug. This one actually, unfortunately, it's not in all the way. I'm about to loosen it now. For some reason, that didn't go all the way in. You'd see that it wasn't all the way in for the groove. 
No, it's all the way in. So now, you can see before we, t we, we put the um, we put the socks on to, to protect it. I have a nice coat of wax on my motorcycle, so. Hmm. Don't you hate when, you, when, you, when there's any dirt on your bike and you, that you're, you're worried that it's a scratch? So we take the towel off, and I had some electrical tape on there. And one th final thing we will do here, at least with this particular install, is we'll come around and we're going to make sure everything works. So we put the auxiliary, and just with the heck of it, put the stereo on. As you can see, this thing's really custom, my bike. I've got a lot of chrome on here. Make sure my brake light works, which I see my brake lights work. Make sure my turn signals work. Actually, they're not going to work on it. So I just made sure that my uh, turn signals work, stereo work, brake lights work. So that particular fuse is okay. Here's the wire right here. You can see the wire. Uh, that I installed or hardwired in. Right now, um, I have it loosely uh, hooked up right now, and I will button that down. And that's how you hardwire a GPS on a Harley Davidson Electric Glide. Again, my name is biker lawyer Norman Gregory Fernandez, and I ride just like you. If you want to follow me, go to my blog. It's called the Biker Law Blog. You can Google it. Or you can go to www.bikerlawblog.com, B-I-K-E-R-L-A-W-B-L-O-G.com. And if, God forbid, you've been in a motorcycle accident anywhere in California, call me at 800-816-1529, 800-816-1529.